might look like a piece of grass and I'll be able I'll get into your question now now but I'm gonna put it just there on the dashboard for Senzo but you can see on my finger it looks like a piece of grass a blade of grass but it is actually a little insect so it is called a stick insect is what we often refer to it as and you can imagine when this is sitting on a blade of grass how difficult it must be to actually see this I mean it's perfectly designed even if you look at the antenna areas you can see in front it almost looks like grass that's been broken and kind of splayed apart and looks very sort of natural doesn't it so imagine that on this piece of grass it must blend in so well and the reason why it has to do that is because it's got no other natural defense this little stick insect has got no way of being able to kind of fight things off it doesn't have big jaws it doesn't have stingers it doesn't have venom that it can inject and or poisons or anything like that and so it's got to rely solely on its camouflage in order to stay alive but how cool is that well spotted Senzo that's really awesome I love these kind of guys and when you see them on grass what they'll do is they'll tuck their legs to their side so it just looks like a piece of grass and I promise you you can drive past this you wouldn't even know and we probably do drive past thousands of these guys as they sit in the grass but that is just such a cool thing to see. Now little one I want you to be able to go onto the dashboard because I can't drive with you like that. Come on off you go. No you want to still grip to my finger. There we go. No 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 no. Come on, there we go. So I believe a lot of you are saying absolutely incredible camouflage. You see, look how it uses its feel as always an antenna to try and just pick up where things are in front of it and to be able to kind of work out what's going on. And then once it's sort of decided everything's fine, then it will be able to kind of move on. Now, interestingly enough, there's another little insect running around on this dashboard just behind. It's a much fasting, faster moving microscopic little fella. There it goes. It's running along there. It's a small little spider. There it is. Well done, Senzo. And so that's a tiny, 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 tiny spider that's also on our dashboard that's spinning webs all over the place. I have webs dangling from my cap, from the camera. It's all these little spiders and there's lots and lots and lots of them actually here at the moment. So we actually do need to get rid of these guys because a lot of the time they are nasty species of spiders. We get a lot of the brown buttons that nest on our camera well, on our sort of cars at night and then these little ones hatch all over the place and then they walk all over you while you're driving but there goes our stick insect i think we're going to leave him dangling there it's almost like something out of mission impossible where he's kind of dangling on the dashboard and just taking it very easy so <laughs> we'll leave him there and hopefully he'll be all right now i'll be able to get back into your question in terms but she's not in full-blown season which means they're not going to just taking it very easy so <laughs> we'll leave him there and hopefully he'll be all right now i'll be able to get back into your question in terms of private great reserves and and fitting in with the greater kruger national park are there certain standards and and things that they need to have yes there is all right so they have to have a certain quality um, of fencing on the boundary to be able to protect it from the, the certain area they also need to ban basically hunting the hunting becomes a big part of it unless they negotiated with the 
Kruger Park system as to taking off certain species because of overpopulation. So Timbavati has that every now and then where they'll take off certain species of impalas and various other things in order to be able to take off enough that the, it's not damaging the land because some species actually overpopulate in certain areas because of um, lodges and water holes and all of those kind of things. We get a, an increased number and things. So that and, and then there's a couple of other small little technical stuff that they need to have. There's a kind of group of reserves that come together called the APNR and that is the the everybody has to fall into that and discuss there what exactly they're going to do now there's a bird that's calling behind me that's distracting me massively because i don't recognize this call at all i don't i've never to be honest heard this here in the sabi sand so i'm trying to just work out what bird it is and i want to reverse back and see if i can spot this bird and see exactly what it is because its call is very foreign to me i don't know this call at all what are you and where are you? It sounds like it's somewhere in one of these trees on my right hand side. But you can hear it, it's a... Now I don't know that call at all. There's a bubbly oriole call in the background and then there's another call that's very different. And I'm trying to see if I can see a bird in the tree anywhere. The problem with this time of the year is you've got to be a bit careful because a number of birds will call a mating call that is slightly off from their normal calls and it can be quite confusing as to what the bird is but I don't know that call at all. It's a mystery to me and I've kind of got it in my head so I'm going to try and see if I can somehow remember it and go through a whole bunch of bird calls there's a bird sitting on top is it that one maybe you see it there sends on the top of that small tree there's a tiny little bird that's just flown away but it doesn't sound like a tiny bird it sounds like a bird that is shrikey that's kind of or oriole like but it's not the black headed oriole maybe it's the european or african golden orioles i'll just have to check on their calls now now and see i've got to just get my jacket off because i'm roasting in the sun at the moment it's also it's gone quiet now so it's not calling anymore but i'll try and remember that call and just go through some of the bird calls that i've got and maybe we'll be able to find it let's have a quick listen while we're here just listen to the uh, the orioles and see which ones we've got now this is the thing when with bird calls it's quite tough because it's not like you can just match a bird call it's not like a site where you can use all kinds of IDing features to think about what you're going to go for so i'm just going on a whim this is the african golden oriole no it wasn't that let's go to the next one which should be the eurasian and let's see if it's got a call there it is. That's it. So Eurasian Golden Oriole is what we just heard calling. That's exactly what it is. So I'll show you what bird it is in my book because my phone's going to probably have too much glare on it from the sun. Uh, Orioles, Orioles, there they are. Okay, so these guys should be arriving back for summer now. I expected to start seeing them around so you get the African and, and the Eurasian This is the one that we just heard calling right now now The reason why I thought Oriole is because it's got a quite a liquid call and it's one that I thought potentially would be Here and this time and that's why we checked there before anywhere else the African golden one and the European or Eurasian look very similar if you look at them they're really tough to tell apart the thing is with the with the Eurasian is that if you look on the eye area you'll see that the black doesn't really extend beyond the eye very far it's just got a small little line that comes off and then on the wing structure itself very dark black wings if we go up towards the the golden oriole the african golden oriole you'll see that there's a lot more yellow on that wing and this eye stripe you see extends past the eye on both birds on both female and the male whereas on the eurasian it does not and then in flight when you see them flying because you often will see these two birds flying you see how that yellow presents itself close to the body whereas this one has those black wings all the way through so that's how you can ID these two just in flight from the wing structure alone
Wonderful. It's good to hear these guys again. They are certainly a beautiful bird and not a really easy bird to see. Both of them are quite tough, quite shy, quite reclusive. So to see either one of those is always a special thing. I know we didn't see it, but we heard it, which is wonderful anyway. Right. There we go. We're going to carry on. We're going to see what else we can find and just me meander along. Let's see now what happens. The taller one seems to be giving her the eye. And also just having a quick, quick sniff to tell whether or not she is in season. Now what I'm guessing is that she could be coming into season, which is what's kind of semi-arousing these boys, but she's not in full-blown season, which means they're not going to have a full-blown fight over her until she's ready to decide who she would like, would be my guess. Well, she's just started having a pee, and they often like taking a smell while the ladies are peeing. So I'm guessing that's what he's going to do. It obviously allows him to get... Oh, there's the Fleming Grimace. Oh, he's not facing the right way, and he's drooling with excitement. Look at that. Let's see if we can go tight on his face as he'll do that Grimace again. Do it again. You need to face us. It would be such a cool picture if you got him pulling a funny face. And for those of you who don't, don't know what the Fleming Grimace is, it's basically an organ in the upper lip that processes smell. So it's not just their noses that they use, but a special organ called the Jacobson's organ. And quite a few mammals will curl their lips up in order to allow their Jacobson's organ a better chance to process the smell. So we see lions do it, leopards do it. Most mammals actually will do it. I've got a glimpse of it there. It's also fascinating how quickly he started salivating. A little spider web of saliva came out of his mouth. Like I said, I'm guessing that she's not quite in season yet. That's why the boys are seeming fairly relaxed for the time being. Wonderful. All righty, well, I think we can press on. Seeing as though not too much is evidently happening here. Now, for those of you who were with us on the sunrise, uh, sunset safari last night, a similar thing happened, and I'm guessing it's the same giraffe because we're in a very similar area. So. It'll definitely be worth keeping an eye on them as we pass through this area in the coming days because hopefully we'll maybe get to see the males having a proper go at one another and then also get to see them, well, the winner making love with one of these fine ladies. Terry, you'd like to know if the big cats are the only animals that get collared here in the Mara. And no, they're not. The hyena cat dog is another animal that will also get collared. We have seen a few with collars. So lion, cheetah, hyena cat dog, and what other animals have you seen with collars? I think a few elephants possibly have got collars, but none others that I can think of. And out of the cheetah, it's just the male cheetah, and 
I think with the lion as well, it's usually the male lions that are in the surrounding community conservancies that get collared to try and understand how they disperse and where they move to when they need to move, move out of their natal prides area.